Hey yo, I'm Nick. Hello and welcome, I'm Kat. This is a series about how we designed our very own caravan and put it to the test. We take you on a journey through the building phase right through to the fun parts. You'll see how I designed the electrical system so you can build one for your very selves. So join us on this elf wing adventure as we travel the countryside and take in some spectacular sights. Let's go, let's go, let's, let's go. go! Hello and welcome to this special episode, um, Seven Lessons of the Gib. <laughs> Um, this is going to be a pretty long one because we've got a lot to cover. Um, when we first started planning for the Gib, we, you know, we kind of underestimated how bad the roads and all of that kind of stuff were going to be. Um, we thought that we were organised, but in hindsight, we we overlooked so many things. Um, so we thought that we would put together a video. Um, of what we thought was the seven lessons of the gear. It gets the best of you. It's 600 kilometers of corrugation, and if you got, it'll point out any flaws in, in your kit. So, yeah, we, we got served, and uh, we're going to show you what went wrong and, and uh, yeah, what happened. <laughs> yeah, you're going to enjoy this one. So, sit back and uh, relax and, and take notes. Take notes, yeah. <laughs> Very sketchy going through here. It's like up to my knees. So you see why I'm very nervous bringing the car through. I just saw really um, heavy um, land cruisers go through, but you know, they're built for this kind of stuff. We weren't, but we did it. Okay, lesson number uno is don't take a European SUV for driving across Australia. <laughs> That's a huge one. Um, we obviously, you know, amateurs when it comes to full driving and caravanning. Um, so when we first bought our car, so it's a Renault Colios, it is stated as four wheel drive, um, but I think it's just a pretty, a pretty full drive to just be cruising around the suburbs and stuff like that. Um, so it's not really ideal to be going off full driving on these uh, hectic tracks. Uh, we found out pretty quickly that we had to pick and choose where we could actually go. Um, and the main reason for that is because there's no clearance. Um, you know, you get bogged easy. Uh, you got to be thinking about going down some tracks that are, you know, uneven grounds and stuff like that. Sandy tracks um, and water crossings. Um, along the Gib, there's about three water crossings, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just have to all those things you have to be mindful of. And if if we had a high clearance for wheel drive, we, you know, would have been sweet. Yeah. It's exhausting. Uh, a hundred thousand degrees. So, lesson number two of the Gib. 
regular checks. You need to get out and stop after, you know, an hour on those corrugated roads. Things can be rattled unloose. You want to be checking that everything is where it's supposed to be. Um, making sure things are tied down properly as well. Um, and make sure you check your Anderson plug as well. Um, that caught up. So that's what caught major, up. Down. Major setback. Um, you know, you're running a fridge and freezer, you're going to need your battery. Um, anyway, the clip's going to tell you what happened to us. <laughs> Bye. So we've had some dramas here on the Gibb Road. Just want to present to you with our battery situation. We're halfway down the Gibb and we're only at 6%. Now, I don't know why this is. I think it was an alternator issue. I th don't think we were charging from the alternator while we are driving. I don't know why. Um, but in extreme circumstances like this, we're just going to leave the car on and just, you know, power up the battery for a bit because we're stuck here without any power. All right. Please. So the sad story about the alternator. So after we'd spent an hour and a half um, fault finding and trying to figure out why we weren't getting any power um, into our battery for the caravan, um, something clicked and reminded us of when we went through Pender Bay. When we got back to Broome, we'd pulled out the alternator and it was just coated with sand. Um, and you know, just gave it a quick blowout to get all the sand out, but didn't realize that there had become little um, tiny pebbles stuck down down in the connector. So what we did, we pulled this flap down, and then we just used this like, little guy, hang on this, that little pointy end, and kind of just scraped, scraped them all out, and there was little pebbles in there. So that's why this wasn't going in flush. So what you need to check for as well is that this actually goes in all the way all right so you just need to try and push it in flush not leaving it the two mil out like we were and you just need to push it in really hard until you hear a click which i don't even think i can get in so i'm just gonna get nick to do it ready there you go that's the click that you want to hear and Make sure they're flush there, because if it's not connected tight, it's not going to charge. It might charge for five minutes, but not for the full three hour journey that's ahead of you. So we're going to take a little break of the lessons. This is a travel vlog after all, so let's go and check out at Cock Porch. See you there. <laughs> so we're just walking into Adcock Gorge. Um, it's a bit too rocky and we need a more of a high clearance vehicle to get through.
look, we were cruising down the Gibb River Road, just not a worry in the world. And um, before we know it, we, we pulled up at the Manning Gorge Roadhouse. Mount Barnett. Mount Barnett Roadhouse. And we had absolutely just dem obliterated, <laughs> <laughs> obliterated our um, wheel on the van. Yeah, the tire was com completely like noodles. So th this, um, this one goes out to the Gibb River Road especially because it is just, you know, it has so many sharp little rocks and it's corrugated and the grading is just not that great. We didn't even feel that we had popped the tyre. We didn't know. We, we probably were driving for about 45 minutes with a, with a popped tyre and, and we just, the, the rim is just next level gone. So Have a look out. anyway. So we made it halfway, we're at Mount Barnett. Um, so far we're in good sorts. Except for one small issue. Tore him to shreds. Absolutely shredded. Look at that. It's a work of art. The Gibb River Road. Pretty safe to say that this rim is fucked. Gonna need a new one. So after Adcock Gorge, we went to Galvin's Gorge. Um, it's a very accessible one, um, easy to get to, about 10 minutes from the car park, and yeah, super nice. It's so, a fun one with a rope swing. Yeah, a lot of fun. Take the kids, they'll enjoy <laughs> it. Hey, beef. Um, so, you know, once this massive ordeal of the tyre happened, we put a new rim on, new wheel on, ready to go, went to go to our next um, destination and got about an hour into the trip and the leaf spring snapped on our trailer. Um, when that happened, it brought the axle all the way to the back of the van and it just jammed up in the, in the mud guard there so we couldn't even move, we just came to a halt. Luckily, um, 
who came to the rescue? Uh, Loretta and Clark. Big shout out to those guys. Big shout out. Went, yeah. They went above and beyond to help us with our nightmare. <laughs> And it, and it was those guys who, I mean, they got experience doing that thing and they were like, why not just get one of your ratchet straps, hook it to the um, front of the van and just secure it and then you can limp your way back to the, um, not the eco retreat, what is it? The Manning, uh, Mount Barnett Roadhouse. Mount, yeah, so we, we took it back to Mount Barnett Roadhouse and um, yeah, they, they saved the day, man, and that was awesome. But uh, yeah, always just travel with... With some tools and ratchet straps. Oh. Uh, we've been struck again by the gib. Um, the wheels come off the axle. Uh, this is, I guess, really should have an off-road trailer. This is a leaf spring trailer um, and I reckon we're gonna have to take these bolts out and push this back so it's back in line because right now it's 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 way way look it's hitting the mud guards here and uh yeah it's it's not working can't even spin the wheel so we're gonna try see what we can do i guess the lesson here is make sure it's off road and if it's not carry plenty of tools with you because otherwise you're stuffed Champion came by and he had a sat phone and we were able to call the um, RAC to get it towed. Um, they're coming tomorrow and uh, he happened to be a, a rigger by trade and he came along with a few ratchet straps <coughs> and as you can see we had to ratchet the entire thing to the frame of the trailer just to get it back. Um, yeah, pretty big, pretty big ordeal. Um, you know, it was, it was crazy, it was fucking hot. Um, the wheel just, you know, ripped off the, the axle. The leaf springs just caved in. Um, yeah, so this wraps up our Gib River attempt. Um, probably get ourselves over to Darwin. Um, towing, the tow cost is three and a half grand. <laughs> so we're not happy about that. And, um, but, you know, we just gotta accept the feet. The Gib defeated us. So lesson five on the lessons of the Gib is to make sure that you have premium car and caravan insurance. Very important one and one that I would not have always recommended but after this experience I 100% back this and it is just super important. So once obviously we blew out that tyre, the shocks are gone and then we were back on the road, we thought we are going to make it and then the leaf springs went on the trailer so that's, that's like a, a triple Triple, triple whammy. Triple serving of just <laughs> destruction. The gib really got us there and um, it was time to call RAC and um, help. yeah, we need help. We're, we weren't as tough as we thought and um, we had to call for help. And those guys saved the day and they towed us all the way from the gib, middle of the Gib River Road through all the corrugation, through Kununurra and up to Darwin. And without that, we would have just been doomed. Yeah, and so they sent two tow trucks as well. Um, one for the caravan and then one for the, the car. Um, yeah, and had we had not had this premium insurance, we probably would have been out of pocket uh, maybe six to eight grand. Um, so it's a, it's a big, 
big cut if we hadn't have had that. So let's check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I don't need to call them or anything now? No, all sorted. All sorted? Okay, sweet. Yeah. That was easy. Thank you. No worries. Well, thanks for calling. Uh, you try to have a good day from you, okay? All right, thank you. Bye. We're covered. <laughs> I feel like crying. That was so hard. <coughs> By the middle of the gib, um, we had to get um, rescued <laughs> uh, and we got pulled out um, by tow trucks and one of the reasons was because the shocks on the car had completely melted away. Um, and so we got towed, we got towed to Darwin um, and where we had to wait 12 weeks for new shocks to arrive from France. So that was just, that was hectic and a... If you had a Toyota, it would have yeah. been two days, so... Yeah, and a big knockback for us, um, parts were like seriously expensive, um, so... Wasn't yeah. convenient. <laughs> 12 weeks wasn't convenient, wasn't in our plan anyway. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Who? Oh, yeah. What do you say? Lesson six on the give is to get yourself good quality tow ball and jockey wheel. Yeah, this, this one is like majorly important. I'm, they're all easily as important as each other, but yeah. this one is a major one. And um, because when we started out, we just had the generic jockey wheel, and our tow ball was just the level height of the car which was quite low um, so this was just a little bit hard to get the caravan up and onto the tow ball every day yeah, um, and it really caught us out on the gib um, Katrina we we suffered a casualty and the whole jockey just caved in on us and landed directly on Kat's toe um, massive ouchie and yeah. Uh, yeah, we were out. We're in the middle of the gib without medical attention for five days, um, on top of everything else that you've just seen. So, yeah. So we did a big doozy. Um, yeah. So this one is a little bit of a um, bit of blood and splatter here. Uh, just be careful. <laughs> you get ouchy. It's pretty ouchy. Invest yourself a decent jockey wheel. Two things won't happen. You won't get uh, smashed up toes like I did. Um, still don't know if they're broken or not, but fingers crossed that, I don't know, just somehow managed just to take toenails off, which I can deal with. And then the other one, try and have a look. 
jockey wheel has completely um, snapped off so we can't wind it up or down um, obviously big chunks and stuff have been taken out of the wheel itself um, and yeah you can't wind it up or there's it's really hard to wind it up and down on gravel or sand and it's just a big pain in the bum so yeah get yourself a good one of an ouchie, got no um, ice, so just keeping my toes nice and cold on the aircon. Uh, hopefully they're not broken, we'll soon find out I guess. Alright, so this is the hitch system. Um, you know, to some of you it might be dead obvious, uh, to others of you uh, this could be completely foreign. So I'm going to go through a few things. First off, like we said before, don't get a European SUV or just don't get a low clearance four wheel drive like we have because it makes it harder to hitch up your caravan and you're going to knock through a bunch of rocks and it's just not what you want to be doing. So what we did, we invested in a third party tow ball to get it a little bit higher off the ground. Um, it made it a hundred times easier and the reason that is is our jockey wheel like when you put it down I mean look at that it doesn't even make it to the ground so you got you got to literally undo this and then put all your strength into just jamming it up and even when you think this is, the, this is probably the most important point is, even when you think you've got it like connected like we do here, you don't. And I'll, I'll show you with the camera. See, these little nubs is where um, this locking mechanism is meant to go through. And I've got a mallet here so I can show you. Now have a look at this, when I knock it with the mallet, that's them in now. And I reckon we overlooked that and that's what caused the accident with Cat's toe. So, you know, th that is like fundamental and it's going to prevent injury. So, you, you want that, you want a, high, a toe ball high enough that's going to hitch it on. Um, a couple of other things, the handbrake, it, that, this is the handbrake to the brakes. And when you are traveling, just flick it back all the way because otherwise, you know, you might go over, over a bump and it, suddenly the brakes on um, also this is the can you see this you probably can't even see what I'm doing but I, all right this this little thing here um, pull, pulls the brakes so if you're reversing on on bumpy terrain um, just lock this in and it's going to prevent the brakes from pulling in and you can just reverse through like weird terrain and stuff but always remember when you're traveling just take it off other things is um, the chains you know uh, just keep a couple of spare shackles we we lost like three or four just I think just going over like hardcore four-wheel drive tracks and just they got broken off and stuff that and people can steal them um, yeah a couple of shackles you meant to cross it over the chains we just left it like that give us a bit of clearance no big deal and then you just got your two plugs, your Anderson plug and your, and your trailer plug here. Um, so yeah, it's just a, there's a whole system here as you can see. Um, as long as you just stay on top of it, then no dramas. But yeah, we, we got hit at the worst time possible and that's why I wanted to make this video so you can actually see what goes into it, what to be aware of and just little tricks and things to, you know, take, take in when you're on the road. And if you're new to caravan like us, we're just, you know, silly people from the metro and have no idea about four wheel driving and we're learning as we go. So we just wanted to, you know, show you all the different ins and outs and that's it. That's the hitch. Um, yeah, safe travels. Peace. So now we're going to check out the last gorge on the Gip River Road and that was Manning Gorge. So that's located um, on the Mount Barnett Roadhouse property at the back of that. Um, it's about 40 minutes walk uh, from the camp ground area. Um, you have to cross a river 
yeah, you get to get into a little boat and pull your stuff along. Um, it's definitely a little adventure one um, and absolutely beautiful.
So last but not least is number seven, um, the lessons of the gib is to make sure you secure your cupboard doors or any lids. Um, so we didn't get our caravan back to us for about three weeks. Uh, stayed down in Kananara uh, to get repaired and all the insurance to be approved and whatnot. Um, so when we did get it back, um, it was put on another tow truck up to Darwin where we were waiting for it. When we opened the doors, it was a pretty big shock because the, our kitchen um, cupboards had been opened and we had barbecue sauce that was like all over our bed. Um, there was uh, smashed other bits and pieces so it was a it was a huge mess to deal with and like dried barbecue sauce is not really ideal either. Yeah, so, 40 degree heat. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so just make sure you're tying things down properly. Um, like we keep saying corrugations are pretty hectic on the gib. Um, oh fuck. Oh. Great. All that shit on our mattress. Favorite barbecue sauce. God damn. Um, So after the uh, barbecue sauce debacle, um, we've taken the top cover off. This brand of this mattress is called One Bed, um, and we can't fault it. It's super comfy, um, it's memory foam as well, but as you saw before, the, the layer of barbecue sauce is quite thick. Took the um, layer off and just chucked it into the wash, and we've just wiped it down. And I mean, you can see a little bit of a line, but I mean, Gonna survive another day. Get your nose out of here. <laughs> what are you doing? Here. Here. On dish. He doesn't even want the lettuce. He's like, got anything else? Yeah, I'll put it there for you. So that concludes our seven lessons of the gib. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed that and were able to take some crucial information for when you guys go to tackle give yourself and a massive massive thank you to Mount Barnett Roadhouse for having us up for those five days when we were really just down and out um, we couldn't have done it without you and you're the best um, yeah massive love for, so for all you guys all your service and everything um, so next up we'll see you in the NT.